Hi, my friend. It is Wednesday, Block Wednesday, and I'm Pat Sloan, and this is day three of our challenges for Jumpin' June. We've got daily quilt challenges here. We, me, I, you, <laughs> daily quilt challenges. So today, if you didn't get your calendar yet, you can download it. Link is below. It is called Rock, Paper, Scissors. And you know that game? Yeah. So it's kind of a play on themes there. We've got a game and a game and a game. So childhood games, let's do that first. And it is not rock, paper, scissors, but uh, it could be, it could be if that is your favorite game because today is a wild card. So this is your wild card block. And you know, I think all games have some sort of a wild card in them. They may not call it that where you can, you know, change the rules or, do something funky uh, during the game so you could just change it up. So for me the wild card was for you to uh, sort of embody the game that I didn't mention because I could only mention so many games in this so long. So I picked for my game or my childhood, you know, the thing that I did was play with the Barbies. I loved my Barbies um, and that was my game of choice for many years. I sewed them clothing, I designed clothing, uh, I recruited my brother's G.I. Joe to hang out with Barbie because they were the same size dolls, so they could, they could be uh, friends. So, <laughs> so here's the block, and I had fun. And you'll see on the website, uh, the post, is that I changed the middle out. I did one, this isn't the first fabrics that I had. The plaid was, I had some, I had pink. I had pink in there and it just didn't look good. Nah, it didn't look good. So I changed it out uh, before I sewed it. So there you go. I actually made two of these four patch units in the middle, one with the pink and then I changed it to this one. So this is our wild card block for childhood games. But rock paper, and the link is below. You can go download uh, the, you can go download the block, the last block. Yeah, then it becomes a top. You finish sewing all those together. Like I'm gonna sew that into the bottom row and then I have the border to go around it. So I should have put all those blocks up there. I'll put them up for tomorrow for the video. Yeah, so rock, paper, scissors. Your paper, like I've shown you already a couple of times, is pretty important. I'm gonna get rid of the calendar there out of my way. So having some paper to draw on during this free motion quilting month, you know, quilt your own quilt month, even if you're doing walk and foot quilting, just getting your ideas out before you go to fabric really helps. It helps you think through the, where you're gonna go, how you're gonna approach things. So you want to, you could get a notebook or if you don't really need to keep these, just you know, you know, use old paper, use the back of things. Like if you've printed something and the back is white, just use the backs, that's what I do a lot. So I just, you know, it's kind of like recycling. I only use one side. So let's take a look here. I have today put the panel in and I have adjusted, I've gotten the camera so that I am going to be able to pull it right down here close. And I'm gonna show you about outlining and what I do to outline with, with thread. I'm gonna actually quilt. But there's a couple points before I do that. Uh, that, you know, some questions that came up. Plus I put out a post last night, ask Debbie. So Debbie will help, um, she wanted to help answer some questions for people about the free motion quilting. You can show a picture and she, she'll be happy to try to help you out. So and be sure that you follow her and follow her YouTube. Um, so there are a couple of things. There's one, yes, you do need to put the feed dogs down. Somebody said, would well, you have to put the feed dogs down? The feed dogs are uh, the little feet that the little metal ridges that are inside your, your plate there. And then when you put them down, they go flat. You can actually free motion quilt with the feed dogs up. And uh, some people actually feel like they have a little more control, but it is going to be fighting you because they're doing this while you're pushing the fabric all over the place on top of it. So you're pushing against something that's just going one direction underneath like that. And your fabric is, is doing this. And, it's doable because it's not a huge, it's not like gripping and pulling your fabric in, but it is going to have some tension and some pressure against you, ship, you know, moving your fabric around. So just be aware of that. 
So we need to have a color of thread. Now I've already picked a color of thread because it's loaded and the bobbin's wound. I use the same color thread in the top and the bobbin. So I have my Orifil thread here, my container of green. So let's take a look here at the green. And I want to fairly match this green here. So when I'm doing that, I'm going to come in close. And then after we do this, we're going to stay close. Um, I'll bring it over that way. So I want I want to use a green that that matches. It can be a little darker because darker will recede. Like I know it's not going to be as easy to see that on camera, but there you can. Yeah, you can see it. So there's a darker and here's a lighter green. You can obviously see that is way lighter. And you see how the light sort of pops pops towards you. If you want your quilting to pop towards you, I find that when you're first learning like this, it is much uh, more forgiving for you to make your thread match. Uh, because well, you can't really see the what you're doing then, which um, is helpful to a lot of people because it stresses them out not to be perfect yet. So if you're one of those people, try to match your thread. Now this one, I think matches most closely. Uh, but also going a little bit darker. I went somewhere in between these two is what is threaded up into the machine. All right, so here's my, here's my glorious thread. So I need to put them back in here tidy, but you know, they pretty much sit in these containers. That's what I do, keep my thread in. Okay, let us get the camera over to the machine. There we go. And the camera can come in pretty close. Okay, so I need to scoot down here. What I'm going to do is work on this. I'm gonna work on outlining this butterfly and then uh, do a little bit of background work. And I'm going to be doing something really simple, you know, no complicated things. Okay, so I'm going to pull up the thread. We come in a little closer. There we go. And I'm just, I'm just outlining. When I get to there, I will get my hand will be moved down a little bit. So, all right, I do a couple stitches in place to lock it. And then uh, we'll do the same when I end. So just a few stitches in place. And then now I will be pretty much outlining. I'm going to go around. Now you can do a couple of things. You can just use this green just in the background, which is probably what I'm going to do in this panel, which means that every time that I change, you know, sort of areas, like if I do the navy butterfly, then I will be changing to navy. And when I do the pink that's in there, in that little area, I will change to pink. Now, depending on how I'm going to cut these, okay, so I've got, got the scissors here because I don't want those. I cut them right to the surface. Now, you can try to keep as close as you want to those items, and that is really a great way to learn, to stay super close. Or you can do it a little bit away, like this one is, so it's not like real tight, so I actually can see the outline. Um, and here I got down on the butterfly, got, well, like really close. And so you wanna try to be consistent, try to be consistent around there. So if I wanted to now do some loops, then that's what I would be doing next. I would come in in this background, I am going to do loops. I'm not gonna do bubbles, because bubbles actually take a lot of time to fill in all the space. So I am gonna do these soft loops. Now do you see this rose over here? Let me shift it. You see, this is the beauty of free motion, is you can shift this any way you want. So like now I want the rows here so that we can see it. I don't have to work in this weird sort of angle. I can work right there. So I can come over here now, even though I've not done all the background, I don't need to do all the background. I can go to the next shape. Whoops, sorry about that. So I'm outlining this rows like this. And then I've decided that this rose is, is fairly big. It's maybe like a two inches across, maybe a little bit more. So I want to have some definition inside of it. So I will just sort of do some loops around, sort of loosely following kind of the rows. And then come back out and come back out to where I came in. 
So now I have a little bit more here and I'll pull this up and show it to you. Um, see if I pull it up, I have to lock the stitches. So that would mean like right now I would just be ending here. Let's say, you know, you're running out of bobbin. So there I'm ending and I can just uh, click my button that cuts my thread. And then now let me just pull this up a little bit. Whoops, I'm gonna pull it back and realign that rose so that you can see what I did, what the quilting was that I did on the rose. There we go. So you can see I came in here and then I just sort of followed around. Well, I came this way. So I just sort of followed around loosely and you know, just uh, did a little bit of, of work inside of this to give it definition. And then I came, followed back out the same way I came in. So there is the loops that you can see, and I outlined the butterfly. So this particular loop pattern is what I'm going to do in all of the green. Let me back it out some more so you can see the panel. <clears throat> so the idea will be to outline everybody, and even like on these feathers, you know, outline, 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 outline. So now your goal, <laughs> your, your challenge for today is to go ahead and take a look at your panel. I know you did some work on it yesterday. I don't know if you've decided to do just an overall on your panel. If that's the case, then, then quilt on it for at least 10 minutes. If yesterday you only quilted on a quilt sandwich, then today see if you can get down to the panel and start working on the panel so that you can move forward on that and have part of it done. Okay, I'm Pat Sloan. Thank you so much for free motion quilting every day in June with me and you and all of us. So I love you. You can do this. I will see you tomorrow.